Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And last week marked the cinematic return of Godzilla. And to be honest, it's been a while since the last American film, and it's been even longer since the last Japanese one. So I wonder if it will be good or not. Two hours later. Eh, it was okay. Welp, I just lost some subscribers. But to the 10 of you guys who chose to stick around, Thank you. My opinion aside, I think most of us here on this channel specifically are wondering how strong this Godzilla is. So I figured that I would kill two birds with one stone and compare this Godzilla to the last cinematic iteration of the character that was made in Japan, being Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla's scaling is also pretty contentious itself, so I think this will give me the opportunity to talk about some misconceptions about him as well. But first, if you like the power scaling content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. We post weekly videos where we cover a wide variety of topics. From Five Nights at Freddy's to Godzilla, this is the place you want to be at. But without wasting any more of you guys' time, let's get into the matchup. Okay, so starting off with Shin Godzilla, and his medals have been out for almost a decade, which means that they're pretty easy to talk about. And for starters, Shin, even in a weaker state than his final form, on screen was able to casually topple buildings and push through bridges. So that would yield around small to like building levels of power. This is consistent with his durability, as Shin can endure tank rounds and most modern day weaponry. Shin in his final stage is also massive, being one of the biggest Godzillas to date. I'm not gonna say it makes him very strong or anything. Like, you guys know that Show Godzilla will lay him out any day of the week, but the energy output he would generate just by existing and moving would be anywhere from 0.68419 tons of TNT to even 12.78 tons of TNT. So, Shin Godzilla just by existing would output building to city block levels of power. Now that we've gotten the physicality of this version of the Kingdom Monsters out of the way, let's talk about his most famous attack, being his beam spam, or atomic death as some people call it. Basically, Shin Godzilla like every other Godzilla can shoot an atomic breath. But Shin Godzilla's atomic breath is much more dangerous, not in physical attack potency, but due to its range and frequency, as he can shoot multiple beams at once and they cover hundreds of meters of space, with each beam being at least light speed because they're visually shown to be like literally lasers, but much more definitively in the film, they're described to be composed of photons, which move at light speed. Okay, now that we've got the speed of the beams out the way, how potent are they? Well, they're shown to slice through jets, missiles, and even buildings, with each of these beams being calculated to be anywhere from city block level at the lowest, but we can use some higher end calculations for the beams that will put them around large town level to even small city level. But unfortunately, he can only use his attack one time before freezing for a period of two weeks. So unlike some Godzillas, it's safe to say that this attack doesn't really scale to Shin's base attack potency. And this is pretty evident when looking at Shin's durability, and much more specifically, his anti-feats. While Shin Godzilla is impervious to most man-made weapons, even he has his limits. As before the atomic death scene, he's critically injured by bunker bombs. And no, Shin Godzilla's back is not a weak spot, that's headcanon. As supplementary material says that despite his hard skin, he was no match for the bunker bombs. I don't think this would make Shin Godzilla a glass cannon, as it still took multiple bunker bombs in order to start to damage him. Keep in mind, each bomb is around 2.6 tons of TNT. That would be around large building level per bomb, meaning that you need numerous large building level attacks to start to damage Shin, who's city block level. So that's fair enough. But even more damning in my opinion, it's stated in the movie by the characters that a nuclear bomb would kill Shin Godzilla. Granted, human characters are kind of consistently wrong about Shin Godzilla, but even Hideaki Anno himself confirmed that yes, the bomb would kill Godzilla. So overall, Shin Godzilla has city block level attack potency and durability, and he would be around subsonic due to his sheer size, but you can get him to supersonic, as he can move his head to tag stealth bombers, which move around 628 miles per hour. And yes, he was able to catch them with his beam, but Shin Godzilla's beam is kind of stationary as it kind of only moves where his head is pointed at, meaning that he would need movement speed relative to on par with these stealth bombers in order to put his head in the proper direction. Oh, I bet you guys thought I was done with Shin Godzilla's scaling, and no. Believe it or not, Shin Godzilla has an anime AoE attack, as it's stated that if his nuclear reactor were to be destroyed or activated, he would explode with the force of several nuclear bombs. This is by far Shin Godzilla's strongest attack, as its power is equivalent to numerous nukes, but we can assert that its output is stronger than such bombs as the Sar bomb, as Shin Godzilla's explosion would have gone on to pollute the planet for 100 100 years. To put something like that into perspective, the full output of the SAR bomb, which was 100 megatons, was only theorized to kind of produce the same thing. But at bare minimum, Shin's final explosion would be stronger than the tested SAR bomb, which was 57 megatons of TNT. Obviously, none of this scales to Shin Godzilla's base stats, as it comes with the cost of his own life, and he needs to die in order for it to happen, but it's one heck of a trump card to be honest. But how does the new guy on the block compare to this? 
And well, you guys are gonna have to bear with me for this video because the movie's pretty new and I can't really show you guys any of the clips. So either I'll show something that's kind of relating to what I'm saying or you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Oh, if the audio sounds a little weird for this segment of the video, I'm outside right now standing on the grass. You know, <laughs> as a power scaler, I'm not quite used to it. So let's just say you guys are not the only ones making compromises. Considering the film is pretty new, I'm gonna try my best to give you guys the most analytical and comprehensive view of what we know about Godzilla Minus One scaling wise so far. And it's actually a lot more than the average person could just assert because I have the access to the novelization and the translation for it. So I have some additional context to the feats that we see in the film. Oh, and spoilers, by the way. I didn't think I needed to say that, but there's always one guy in the comment section. So three, two, one. Okay, so Godzilla starts the movie off as a Godzilla Saurus, and he's like a dinosaur, like unironically. And he's shown to casually kill people and no-sell guns so yeah oh and he also survives a nuclear bomb not just any bomb but the bomb tested at bikini atoll which is equivalent to 15 megatons of tnt or city level some of you guys might think this would grant him city level durability and attack potency by extension but unfortunately i have the novel where it stated that the nuke was literally obliterating him and that he would actually have gone on to have died and that he only survived due to his regeneration which is still a w in my opinion because it means that his regeneration works almost instantly as nukes go off in literal micro seconds and this is consistent as the novel states that he heals at a rate faster than the eye can perceive. It also establishes that his regeneration can bypass attacks that are much stronger than his durability because he was just a big dinosaur he's probably like small building level. He went from being annoyed by gunfire to enduring freaking 15 megaton nukes meaning that his regeneration can ironically bring him back from attacks that exceed his base durability by a million times over. So logically this level of regeneration would apply to Godzilla's new base where he stated to be stronger and bigger than before. Just wanted to point that out because whatever stats we get Godzilla to, just remember the amount of force required to actually permanently put him down would be much higher than what we talk about due to his regeneration. But how strong is this Godzilla? Let's find out. Godzilla before making it to Japan was able to destroy a number of battleships and we even see that they were physically destroyed, which would grant Godzilla around building level attack potency. This is consistent because Godzilla can endure tank fire and the novel even says that no animal on earth would be able to survive that arsenal, pretty blatantly upscaling Godzilla off of blue whales which are building level but Godzilla's most impressive stuff comes from the scene in Ginza in which Godzilla is able to effortlessly destroy entire buildings with casual tail and hand swipes due to the amount of damage that he caused and how seemingly effortlessly it was I would give Godzilla some large building to city block level scaling off of this but by far base Godzilla's best showcase of anything is him no selling the shockwave of his atomic breath the same shockwave was able to destroy 20,000 buildings and kill over 30,000 people and according to the novel it also pulmerized everything within a six kilometer radius. I actually went on my way to Google the blast radius of a nuke and within a six kilometer radius, it would produce pretty much everything we saw in Godzilla minus one. This value was about a one megaton nuke, meaning that the blast was around one megaton or like small city level. Godzilla was closer to the initial epicenter of the blast and the buildings were, and he was left unaffected. And yes, I know that one girl survived, but that's kind of just plot due stupidity. You ignore that stuff. And it wouldn't really disregard the amount of stuff that it destroyed on screen. This potential higher end of power is kind of consistent because a supplementary piece of information compares Godzilla to the nukes that hit Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which were around 15 kilotons of TNT respectively, so large town level. So you can take that statement at face value and it wouldn't even be inconsistent with his in-film showcases. Okay, so how about speed? Okay, so Godzilla has one really good speed showcase in the film, in which he's visually shown to be on par with an aircraft flying at around 400 knots, granting Godzilla subsonic plus of attack and reaction speed. Okay, now for the moment you've all been waiting for his atomic breath his atomic breath is fired multiple times in the film with the weakest one being around city block level and the most powerful one being the one he shoots in ginza which creates a mushroom cloud and a shock wave we already got to city level so yeah there's that as for the actual speed of the beam i was able to infer that it was probably relativistic to light speed as even though in the movie they don't really call it a light or a laser attack instead they call it a heat ray multiple times which just means nothing but it's shown that it leaves a lot of radiation so we can say the blast is mostly composed of it which means means that it should be around light speed but thanks to the novel we don't have to kind of guess anymore as there are numerous instances in which the beam is referred to as light i kind of grouped the atomic breath outside of base godzilla scaling because in my opinion godzilla doesn't fully scale to it but he scales to it to a degree as he's able to be intact and have only minor burns after firing it but the fact that it burns him at all kind of gives the impression that the beam is stronger than base godzilla so in conclusion this newest version of the lizard king would be anywhere from large building to city block level but he would be more than likely large town the sea level with the speed being around subsonic and his attack potency would be higher via utilization of his atomic breath
death, which moves at light speed. Okay, with the stats of both Godzilla's out the way, who do I think wins? And on paper, this is actually kind of fairly close, I'm not gonna lie. I mean close if you use Godzilla minus one's lower ends. With him physically being around large town or like possibly even city level. But Shin does have one saving grace, his beam spam, which would be able to actually damage Godzilla minus one. But it wouldn't do Shin too well as Godzilla would just kind of immediately regen off of that. And then minus one has one of two options, going for the kill and beat him to death, or fires atomic breath and kind of blow up Shin. But upon Shin's death, as we've established, he has his AoE anime attack, which is stated to have the power of numerous atomic bombs. See, at first, I thought this matchup was inconclusive because of that. I thought that the nuke that Shin had was just too powerful for Minus One, and he would just get obliterated by it. Because yeah, sure, he was able to survive Bikini Atoll, but Bikini Atoll would be nothing in comparison to a nuke stronger than something that could pollute the atmosphere. But then I realized Godzilla's regen could tank attacks that are much, much, much stronger than his base durability. And even if we wank Shin Godzilla's AoE attack to the power of three, full capacity SAR bombs and say it's 300 megatons of TNT, it still nearly wouldn't be powerful enough to permanently put him down. Because remember, as a wall to small building level dinosaur, his regen was shown to bypass a sea level attack. So if Godzilla minus one was city level and he was getting hit by a mountain level attack, it would hurt, obviously, right? It might even like take some chunks off of him. But by the time it was all said and done, Godzilla would just simply regen. And that's just his matchup in the nutshell. Minus one has every conceivable advantage, actually. And the one thing that Shin could do to scratch him would kind of just get immediately ignored by Godzilla's insane healing factor. I'm sorry, Shin Godzilla, but in a battle of kings, it looks like that only one can reign supreme. If you made it to the end of this video, I'd like to thank you. These videos take me a minute to make and i appreciate you guys for popping out and if you're new here be sure to check out my other content i don't just do godzilla but we kind of do a little bit of everything so if you want to see a diverse amount of power scaling featuring many ips be sure to subscribe but to all the ogs once again thank you for popping out i would like to thank high flyers tag team because he actually was a big help in the discussion phase of this video and he's the one that opened my eyes to godzilla minus one's insane regen so check his channel out make his day I would also like to thank one of my friends on Discord because he actually sent me a link to the translated novel and I wouldn't be able to find a lot of these scans and kind of prove my arguments without them. But anyways, we'll be back next week. But until then, stay big G fans.